All right, so before you watch this video, read the problem and try it on your own. They tell us here that the function f has a domain, that's your inputs, your x values, your domain, these numbers, 1, 3, 5, and 7. Oops, these are my brackets. So that's our domain. And a range of 2, 4, and 6. Those are our outputs, the range, sometimes referred to as our y values. So domain, usually typically x, y is typically range, so x and y. Independent is domain, dependent is y, uh, range. Could f be represented by these points? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 2. Could this happen? And they want us to explain. Um, so let's look at it. One thing I want to look for is the points they gave us. Look at the inputs. 1, 3, 5, and 7. Well, since those points are given here, 1, 3, 5, and 7, that's okay. In other words, we use the domain values that we have. If I want to add another point, say like 8, 2, I mean, sure, 2 is in the range, but 8 doesn't even exist in the domain, so we couldn't even use it. So that's the first thing to look for. Then look at your range. Your range, 2, 4, 6, and 2 checks out because we're only using values from our range right here. And this could be a function because if we look at the mapping of it, a function is set up so that each input maps to only one specific output. So every input maps to, or is projected to, or gives us, if we're calculating, exactly one output. Right? Let's call it output A. If there's another output, B also associated with the input, then this is not a function. That can't happen. So one way we can justify this quickly is to use, uh, I think they're called map diagrams. You can draw two little regions. We have D for domain, 1, 3, 5, and 7, I think. Did I get that right? Yeah, 1, 3, 5, 7. And our range, 2, 4, 6. So you can literally just draw the lines of how they map it. 1 maps to 2 in the point 1, 2. 3 maps to 4. 5 maps to 6, and 7 also maps to 2. That's okay. 1 and 7 both go map to 2, but those two inputs, even though they share an output, that's not a big deal. The problem would be, of course, let me add this in yellow, if 7 also mapped to, let's say, 6, or any other output, then it would not be a function, and you can show it in this way. So those are things to look for. Um, if they use inputs and outputs that don't exist, right? If they have an input that goes to two outputs, you would see another point, maybe like one comma four. In this case, one would map to four and one would map to two. That would mean one input's going to more than one output and that would not be a function. And also look to see um, if there's a simple way to explain what's happening. In this case, you can use these kind of diagrams right here to say, yes, each input maps to one specific output, and that's a function. That's what the definition of a function is. And there are all kinds of other rich ways to look at functions that are really important and interesting. This is just the beginning. All right, hope this helped.